going live in three, two, one. Finally, I'm back with the upload of part two. And if you remember in part one, I removed all the lines on the display on this rangeman. So for an example, in the sub dial, you can actually see what's going on. Then I added loom to the uh, back of the LCD panel just to make it a little bit more interesting. But I've been doing some research and I found another company that provides loom. The company in question question is called Killer Bits and uh, I wrote to them and said look I'm going to be doing a video and I'm after some loom and I want some super strong loom to fit in my G-Shock. They were kind of sort of puzzled but I got a little message from Nigel here and he's even included some glow in the dark powders for a trial as discussed. I'm being really honest with you guys and Nigel has even given me my own watch up 69 code which is found in the description now i think you have to spend about 10 pounds or so but you get up to 11 percent off well you can thank nigel for that there is nothing in it for me anyway i'm here to show you what the difference is so this is what he sent me. he sent me some paint which is luminous and it is in aqua and he also sent me some powder samples like here and I will open those up and uh, give them a charge and show you what they look like. And he also gave me a little UV torch here. Look, look at that. How cool. So I must say thank you to Nigel. Anyway, I want to show you how bright this is. It is blow away. Well, I've got to say a huge thank you to Nigel. I didn't expect to have so many in the packet. I feel like a Colombian drug dealer with all these powders in front of me. Anyway, I have a fine green, a green, I have pink, I have a lightning, lightning bright, I have the aqua, which is in this one here, I have pink and I have tange, which is basically orange, and I have yellow on the corner there. So at the moment in the rangement, I have have this sticker this luminous sticker and that's in blue and with regards to the paint I've done a couple of samples now this is just a couple of coats and uh, I've just cracked it in half just to see how pliable it is and it's not too bad it does have quite a nice bit of flexibility in there and then I've done a really thick coat there. I probably applied it about six or so times. You can really see how thick that is. And it's still quite pliable and it's not cracking. So anyway, what I'm going to do, I'm going to charge all these up and I'm going to show you the difference. You are going to be amazed. Well, I'm just going to give that a little charge and then show you what that looks like. Here he comes and then I'll turn the light off. And that is how bright it is. If I got the other one out, the little crispy cornflake here and gave that a little charge, you watch the difference on here. And this is just a very thin layer. In fact, I need to charge up the other one and give that a little bit of a head start. Now I've got them both together. Let's turn the light off and look at the difference there and then I've got the thick piece here now I haven't charged that at all it's just been in the light box but you can see that is basically the same sort of uh, consistency of uh, luminous so it really doesn't matter if you apply this thick or uh, thinly so I'm going to give that a charge and I'm also going to give the little piece here a charge and sort of try and show you the difference is here and I'm doing it live so you really am not cheating with special effects and I'll just turn the light off and look at the difference there look how bright that aqua is and I must add that the aqua is bright all night long it's actually brighter than my Seiko Sun 021 whereas this blue here after a few hours it is very very dim and you need to be in total darkness to see that let's give that a charge so I'm doing this all live so I do apologize for a blurry background but look at that look how 
that is together. Gotta say that the aqua does last longer through to the early hours of the morning. I'm so, so shocked how strong this is. And uh, even though the Seiko here is looking much brighter, it's because of the green. And I think what I need to do is show you the samples I have in the packet, because those are really bright. And we're gonna go. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Look how bright that Prouder is. I tell you, that is blinding. It makes the Seiko look completely dark. Look at that. That is insane. Quite fun to actually play around with it. Look at that. So this powder you can apply to clothing as well. And I also thought, could you use this to apply on the hands on uh, some of those vintage watches? Just out of curiosity, I've got some other colors here. So I'm interested what the orange does. Shall we have a little test? Have you got time for this? I'll give that a little charge. Actually, I'll charge up this Seiko as well. Give that a few seconds. And all done live. Look at that, you can see, look at that, that's really fun. Look at that, it looks like lava. And I say the green is the most brightest, and um, let's try some UV, get that on there. Oh yeah, look at that, wow. That is crazy. pink let's see what the pink looks like <gasps> oh wow how much fun could you have with that I mean you don't have to use it for watches you can just well, you can paint your house like that what about paint your car oh imagine if you painted the whole of your car with luminous powder <gasps> I think you'd get arrested what's this one like Lightning bright. Oh, wow. Okay. That is interesting. They've done that, so what about this one here. Right, let's try them all. Wow, look at that. That's yellow. And then this one, this one says pink. Look at that. Oh, it's so strange. Anyway, there you go. So it gives you a, a good idea. And you just uh, mix this up with a little bit of paste and a little bit of glue and uh, I suppose PVA glue or something similar to that. It's all written in the instructions. It's all on the uh, on their website how to use these. But I went for the pre-made solution here because I was lazy and because uh, that was the one that interested me the most. If I do that, look at that. And uh, then you just apply that straight on. So what I need to do is get into the watch and uh, make all this happen. So now I'm sort of uh, thinking, should I put the green on the back or should I stick with the aqua? Now I kind of sort of like the aqua and the green is a little bit more, I don't know, what do you think? That's the thing. But the great thing is, is that I can change this at any time. I need to get into the watch and show you some other things I got planned. In front of me, I have something very unusual and these, believe it or not, are tiny little LEDs. Now I thought about changing the backlight. Now these are in bright red and using my multimeter, I can actually test these and show you how it works. Now on the original, it is white and um, so I'm not sure if the red is actually bright enough, but hey, this is all just experimental. See that? Is that focused? Who knows? There you go, like that. These little pads here, one, two, three, and four, these are the contacts for the tiny little LEDs, and it has these tiny little springs. Now, 
I've just lost two of them and they've gone and they are so, so tiny. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use a little bit of paste and actually affix them directly to the board and see how that works. So this is the backing for the luminous. You can see that's the sticker side there. So if I was to turn the lights off completely like that, oh, you can actually see it glowing already. And then I can put my little pen there, a little UV light on the top, and then you can see it glowing. So that is what I need to remove, and I'm going to paint it directly on this. So slight change of plan. I'm going to mix the aqua ready mix paint with some of the green fine because I was just so impressed. So I poured it into a little dish here and I've got a little wooden stick and I'm just gonna stir it around and really get that mixed up. So it's lovely and smooth. Now I was looking at the instructions and it says that you should mix it with sort of a lacquer or something like this that's uh, going to dry sort of more or less clear and not to use water but it's all in the instructions so you can't go wrong wow look at that glow now it's not so much aqua now it's more green but hey um i actually prefer the green being stronger than actually less stronger and being aqua if that makes sense but you can actually see the little bits in there so this could be a little good tip here so you can at least see what you're doing. So what I'm gonna do is probably do a couple of coats because I don't really need to do any more than that. And I shall just paint that on the back here like that. And the great thing is, is that this can actually peel off. So uh, you can always take it back to uh, original. So that's what I had before with the blue. And look at that green now. I hope that's all in focus, but look at the difference. I mean, the blue is already sort of fading. So I'll just let that dry a little bit. So it's a little bit touch dry, and then I shall apply another coat. I thought I'd try it on a hand just to see how it goes. So let's give that a little bit of a, a glow and see how that looks. Wow, look at that. And I've got a little dial here for my Citizen. So if I charge up the old side and then the new side and see what that looks like. Look at that. Now I did blob it on. I'm not doing it professionally, but just to give you an idea of what it looks like. I've got it all over my gloves, look. I've used solder paste to fix the little LEDs here. And look, look how small they are looking at my, uh, sizing it up to my pointer and using solder would have just been a complete mess. Well, in this case, I can actually remove those. And if I do find replacement springs then I shall go back to the original, but I thought just for an experiment, I shall try these red LEDs. Now these face forwards like towards me and towards you, whereas on the original, they would have gone sort of that way. And so um, against a reflective backing, but as I have the luminous backing, I don't know if I'm actually gonna ever need a backlight. So in my first video, quite a few of you have asked how it was possible to remove all the lines. Well, basically when you take the LCD panel out, it has two pieces of glass with the LCD, with the liquid crystal sandwiched in between. And then at the front and at the back, you're gonna have this polarized film and this needs to be removed and it's the one at the back and then once you have that removed, then you can scrape off all those lines. It is not easy, and uh, at times I thought I'm really gonna mess this up because the glass is very, very fragile. And with the camera, it's not making this very easy to sort of show you guys, so I hope you can appreciate the level of video I'm able to produce. Now, for the loom side, this hasn't come out too great for me. Uh, the reason why is because by the time I've mixed up the paste, set up the camera and it starts to harden already 
but it's got sort of like little lumps as you can see but as soon as I put the reflective back in on it sort of clears it up so I'm just going to do it for now just to get this video out there and then at later stage I'm going to take all this back off and then make it all nice and smooth again but so far that loom is incredible so I'm very excited to how that's going to come out. With regards to the LEDs now because I've lost two of those springs and I've used the solder paste that didn't turn out too well so I've ended up actually trying to solder them and whether I've got that right or not I haven't got a clue so the LEDs might fail but this is how it possibly could go wrong so I want you guys to really see the good the bad and the ugly anyway I've got to put it all back together so wish me luck well that wasn't too bad putting that all back together and I have to say that these little springs are very very fine also you have some more springs on the back there this is all to do with the connection to the alarm and when you've got the watch out or the module out of the watch it comes up with open it's quite interesting I've got a flashing battery thing there and um, well I shall come back to that later I think it's because it's not connected to the uh, solar powered anyway so everything is working that's what the module looks like. What I'm interested in is how that loom looks. Shall we turn the lights off and have a little sneaky peek before putting it back into the watch? Look at that. <gasps> wow. So let's have a little bit more light on there and see what it looks like. How's that? Oh my word, that is so bright. <gasps> Just to let you know, I haven't used the original polarized film on there, so at certain angles it fades like this. So I'm going to do a bit more research. I might actually change the color. I quite fancy going for yellow. Anyway, that is the original piece, or piece of the original what I had before. So if I charge that up and charge that up and do that together, you'll get an idea of the brightness. Put those two together like that. And um, the camera's sort of struggling a little bit, but the difference is really, really incredible. How about I just put that away for say a few minutes, five minutes say, and uh, we'll see what they look like after. And I won't turn the lights on, I'll just film straight away. So 206, let's say 1210, we'll come back and have a look. Well, I've actually left it a little bit longer and the green is still going while the blue is almost disappeared. Now, I'm not in a complete blacked out room. I still have a little bit of bleed from the window, but just to give you an idea. So if I was in pitch blackness, I think I could just about use the blue whereas the green is really, really strong. So I'm really excited about to see what that's gonna look like tonight. So let's finish this off and assemble this. Right, the watch is all assembled and I'm charging it under the lamp in the light box. Are you ready for this? I'm gonna turn the light off. Here we go. That is insane. How bright is that? Look, you can see it on my finger. Look, look at it glow. That is completely different to the blue one. And um, I actually prefer the green one now. Now I've seen it. That is just incredible. Look, just going through there. So everything's working perfectly. All the barometer and the altimeter and compass. The only thing that's not working and I thought it might not, is the backlight. I've lost the backlight. Even if I hold it down with a few seconds, 
it comes up with the LT in the bottom corner and then pressing it, it goes off. So obviously the springs are more needed than I thought and my soldering is obviously not that great. Anyway, but with this loom and my little new keywing light here, wow, look at that, quick charge and it's good to go. No more pushing the buttons like so. And um, if you're listening, Casio, can't you put a UV light with the backing of Loom? Oh, imagine that, Casio. Wow. You need to do this. Casio, you really have to listen. Not only listen, you need to take action. We need this. We need this, don't we? All of us need this. The backlight, you all know the backlight for those two seconds, three seconds. It ain't long enough. We want Loom and we want UV light. Look at that, fantastic. Huge thanks again to Nigel for supplying me the killer bit powder and the loom. You have done a cracking job there. And as always, I hope you found this tutorial useful, fascinating, stupid, pointless, who cares? Thanks for watching.